Good afternoon once again. Monday, the 8th of March, 2021, and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing here at the CCSA as always. And we're here for you for on Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday. So firstly, thank you very much to Dr. Bird, Dr. Pisamai for the Thai language uh, briefing, um, wherein she touched upon various uh, important issues, the updates on the situation, the general CCSA meeting that we'll be having next week, which, which will actually talk about the relaxation of measures, uh, perhaps which will be uh, in alignment or in complementarity with the vaccine rollout in Thailand, um, the measures that we'll be having in due course in terms of adjusting the quarantine uh, system uh, possibly, and other issues of interest. So I'll just uh, recap some of these and provide you with also additional information that's specific uh, for the English language audience uh, listening to us here, here in Thailand on television, uh, as well as on, as on social media from around the world. So first of all, just to start off that today marks International Women's Day 2021. So I'd like to wish all women uh, watching the news briefing now a very happy International Women's Day. The theme this year is Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 world. I think that's a theme that's uh, very relevant. And last week, the Foreign Ministry and the United Nations uh, Office here organized a panel discussion on this very topic to kick off a series of conversations uh, this month to promote women empowerment and gender equality. And during the pandemic, the vital role of women have been tested and reiterated once again when they showed their capabilities in various forms. In Thailand's case, village health volunteers, who are predominantly women, helped Thailand to contain the outbreak by carrying out disease prevention campaigns and collecting data for contact tracing. COVID has also shown light on outstanding female scientists and researchers. Uh, for example, last year, L'Oreal Thailand presented Women in Science Special Fellowships uh, for COVID to three Thai female researchers for their work on COVID uh, diagnostic tests, COVID-19 vaccines, and system for monitoring people who may be infected with the virus. And in Thailand, Kun Sutira, the CEO and founder, co-founder of Baya Phyto Farm, has also been recognized for her startup uh, by uh, under Chulangkorn University, which is Thailand's uh, first pharmaceutical company that is able to manufacture medicines and vaccines from the very first step of production. The startup is now working on locally made vaccines and expects the vaccines to be available for public use next year, in addition to the vaccines that we have been acquiring since last month. And these are just a few examples of women's contribution to the COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 world uh, in Thailand's context as well that we are celebrating today. So talk about the world globally. Right now, the numbers that you saw on screen when Dr. Bird presented the information is well over 117 uh, million uh, persons infected with COVID-19 now. But the good news, the good story is that this number is on a downward trend because of the rollout of vaccines around the world. For Thailand, of course, we're still vigilant on all of these, on being careful. Uh, the numbers are getting better, and I'll go to that in a short while. Just one piece of information that you might have seen in the news recently regarding the uh, certain beauty pageant contestants uh, who tested positive and arrived in Thailand. So it was reported that uh, two contestants from the Miss Grand International uh, beauty pageant, uh, contestants from African, some African countries, have been tested positive for COVID and are now being treated at a private hospital in, in Bangkok. So just to emphasize that the organizing committee has strictly observed and followed the standard regulated guideline by the government and all contestants from 63 countries uh, took the swab tests during the quarantine and only two test results of the contestants uh, came back positive and were, they were already transferred to the hospital for further treatment. The quarantine hotel applied their standard uh, policy in terms of ASQ by sanitizing all related areas including accommodation rooms and the rest of the contestants are still under quarantine until the completion of the quarantine period. So this once again has, is a show of the effectiveness of the healthcare system that we have put in place in detecting the COVID at the early phase of the quarantine, which 
results in reducing the risk of spreading the virus. Now this uh, contest in particular, Miss Grand International Contest, will be held uh, in, in Bangkok uh, on the 27th of March. So moving on to the general situation and numbers that we have for today. So new confirmed case, we have 71, but uh, I guess from now on I won't be uh, reading out all the numbers for you. There may be a number, kind of number fatigue uh, situation right now. So I'll just have you look at the screen uh, once in a while. So the most important number uh, for this screen is the green box on top, which is 579, the current active cases, those still currently under treatment. It's been around in the 500-ish for a few days now, which is very good news, uh, comparatively to last month or two months ago. So as you can see, 71 new cases, but uh, the active cases right now, 579. And the numbers are closing in, in terms of those who are recovering with the total number of people that we have uh, recorded to have uh, been uh, positive for COVID since the very beginning. In terms of uh, fatalities, I'll perhaps uh, report to you when there is a fatality. So uh, there's no fatality, new fatality for today. Good, good to report. Actually, the fatality in Thailand, the ratio uh, percentage actually is not that high compared to other countries around the world. Uh, the percentage I have is 0.32%, so less than 1% fatality rate in Thailand. So just some observations from the information provided by Dr. Bird just now. Most uh, cases we found uh, in the past day are asymptomatic in total in terms of province uh, area specific. Around f uh, there were 40 cases, positive cases uh, from Smut Sakon in particular. Uh, th 34 of which were from those detected in hospitals and the other six from active case finding. This is particularly for Smut Sakon totaling 40 for Smut Sakon. And I mention this because it's the province with the highest number of uh, positive cases recorded today, 40. And Bangkok had only one positive case. So out of the 71 cases we had uh, recorded, 41 detected in hospitals, um, 34 from Smut Sakon, as I mentioned, and the rest from other provinces. The Seven cases of, out of the total number were, were found from active case finding, uh, which had six from Smutsakon and one from Batum Thani. And lastly, the 23 cases today are from overseas and are, have been placed into the alternative quarantine system directly. So that is the breakdown of the uh, numbers that we have for today. So Dr. Apisamaye also, as usual, uh, showed um, the map of Thailand, which you can see that health authorities continue to search and find cases of COVID in various parts of the country, in Smut Sakon in various parts of the country. The color coding system is looking better, as you can see, more green, more gray, more, more white. The overall situation continues to improve. So during the 9th of February until the uh, 8th of March today, 66 provinces have not reported any case of COVID for at least one week. So a lot of provinces, 66, none, no cases at all for at least one week. The majority of the 40 provinces in gray have not reported any cases for more than uh, 20 days. So I'd just like to reassure you that the health ministry strongly recommends that members of the public still remain vigilant, DMHTT, is something that we have to keep uh, to our, close to our heart and continue to practice uh, very uh, rigidly. Also to update you uh, that on the 5th of March 2021, the government published uh, an order in the uh, Gazette, in the uh, Royal Gazette website, uh, prohibiting rallies and public gatherings that could risk spreading COVID in provinces of high risk, including Bangkok, Samut Prakan, Samut Songkram, Non Taburi, Nakhon Patom and Patum Thani provinces uh, without the approval from officials. So people who violate this order will face two years of imprisonment or a fine up to 40,000 baht or both. Now I mentioned just now that Dr. Pisamai mentioned about the various relaxation measures under underway. Uh, from time to time we talk about the plans that we have, the future 
uh, meetings that we'll have to relax measures to adjust and change as we go along as we address the COVID situation. So one uh, issue is the plan to uh, eventually ease the quarantine rules for, for tourists. So the possible quarantine relaxation measures were discussed uh, at a meeting. Uh, chaired by the Minister of Tourism and Sports uh, a few days ago. And the relaxation measure, measure will initially be considered uh, for top tourist destinations such as Phuket and Krabi as examples. So the CCSA will consider this proposal of the Tourism Ministry to, in order to, in line with the balance that we try to make to balance the measures to protect people's lives uh, with measures uh, to protect their livelihoods, which is difficult, of course, in balancing, in, in balancing that with uh, things being pursued in terms of the economic uh, needs. And many governments are pursuing this worldwide. One other important issue, uh, update on the vaccines. I think we might have an infographic coming up there for you as well. The cabinet recently approved uh, a budget of $6,387 6, baht to procure additional 35 million doses of uh, vaccines against COVID-19 from AstraZeneca. Uh, this batch of vaccines uh, will be used uh, together with the other 26 million doses that will arrive uh, in around the same time. And this combined total of 63 million doses is expected to cover a large percentage of the entire population in Thailand, over 50%, uh, maybe almost 60%, because of course uh, we have around 63 million people, but you need two doses. So as of the 6th of March, in terms of vaccination numbers, 25,864 people have been vaccinated uh, since the 28th of February. And so far, 116,000 doses have been distributed to hospitals in 13 provinces to be administered in due course to specific groups of people, including uh, frontline healthcare workers, those in close contact with those infected, those who are, uh, have risk and are suspected to be infected, the elderly and those with congenital diseases. Now, just some additional information that um, as we consider the plan, as we have these various meetings to consider relaxation of plans, we're also considering relaxation of measures for Songkran as well. So next Monday, exactly next one day, Monday, seven days from now, the 15th of March, we'll have the general CCSA meeting, uh, which will consider various relaxation measures in, as I mentioned, in alignment and in complementarity with the vaccine rollout that we have in, in parallel with that. That consideration will be made, including considerations regarding entry uh, requirements, perhaps some adjustment to that entry requirements from, from abroad, and considering measures for Songkran, as mentioned. So after the 15th of March, we'll look forward to the 1st of April onwards to possibly revise the disease control zones as well, the color-coded provinces as well. So looking forward to that in, for, for next week and in April uh, to have uh, various adjustments in April and, and beyond. Also, the government continues to give importance to the various engagements that we have uh, around the world. As you know, we have sports uh, arrangements, uh, uh, competitions, beauty pageants that are approved and in line with the important measures. We also give importance to media and information literacy because, of course, this pandemic is essentially an infodemic. So including access to information, which is vital during a public health crisis, as we all know by now. So in this regard, the Thailand will be hosting the 15th conference of the ASEAN ministers responsible for information and related meetings. And this meeting will be online uh, during the 10th to the 12th of March this week and continue to further develop these issues as an important issue within the region, infodemic, pandemic. So ministers responsible for information and, uh, relate and, and, and these types of issues will discuss that uh, this week. Just some additional points. Uh, Dr. Byrne also mentioned about the vaccine passports and vaccine certificates uh, briefly. Of course, there are not yet any uh, international standards in terms of uh, vaccine passports. Uh, there might be regional 
uh, in some regions around the world uh, discussing that, but not an international standard uh, approved but yet, uh, for example, by the World Health Organization or a body of that sort. But in any case, uh, we in Thailand are looking towards, before as a prerequisite to the vaccine passport, we're looking forward towards a vaccine uh, certificate, which can be done. So we are discussing that in terms of issuing these certificates in due course for those who have been uh, inoculated and completed the uh, vaccination process. So just in additional information uh, from the public health uh, ministry, uh, about getting ready for COVID vaccination. As you can see, um, the, we'll have a slide coming up uh, for you. The health ministry has launched uh, a project called Ready for COVID-19 Vaccination to provide services to the public while distributing the vaccines. So, so this project will be carried out by the village health volunteers in Thailand, in local communities, educating the local communities on these issues. For example, one, disseminating knowledge about COVID. Uh, two, surveilling communities and screening target groups. Three, inviting the public to register for the MOPROM application, which is specifically uh, created for uh, vaccine inoculation. Uh, this MOPROM application via the li via line official account. And fourth, following up on any side effects after getting the first and second dose uh, shots of the vaccines. So at present, the village health volunteers, or in Thai, the acronym is all awesome. Uh, they have uh, been informing the above uh, the information uh, to over 320,000 households already, uh, or over 450,000 persons have already registered for MoPROM in their mobile phones. So that's good progress. The uh, vaccines that are authorized for emergency use uh, by the World Health Organization go through an extensive review as well by experts. So this provides a stamp of quality, safety, efficacy, and manufacturing quality. Uh, the vaccines trigger the body's natural immunity to respond to the virus so that it can help immunity systems build and fight against the virus. And you have an infographic about this issue there in addition. Uh, before I forget to mention, the news briefing in the Thai edition also mentioned about the preparations that we have made in terms of school uh, examinations uh, with social distancing measures. Of course, you know, those who live in Thailand, the uh, school examination system is very important for young people in, in Thailand. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that you have to apply and really study uh, hard for. It's like national examinations for various uh, schools. And the authorities have requested the parents to abide by many disease control measures to advise their children on that. And the measures when we actually, actually have different exam, uh, entrance examinations or transfer examinations to Thai schools uh, is there with the various uh, important social distancing measures. So that's being discussed and being planned. So lastly, uh, just to mention that as we start to talk about relaxation, the re relaxation of COVID uh, measures in Thailand, please continue to keep uh, and maintain uh, your guard up. It's very, very important. Do not let your guard down. And as you see on the screen, this very important uh, soundbite from the World Health Organization, low risk is not no risk. Perhaps I'll try to translate this in Thai. Perhaps it's something like, um, or something like, so that's very important for us to keep our vigilance, our being mindful of the various um, situation that we have, uh, the situation that we have in, in, in our country and compared to other countries around the world. Uh, if we put our guard down just because we think the numbers are getting better, because we're, relaxation, we're relax, relaxing the measures, just because we hear that, it doesn't mean that we should put uh, our uh, guard down and think that there is no risk at all. The risk remains there, essentially. So just to urge everyone about vigilance, about mindfulness, and our common mission to fight against the current wave of uh, COVID as it is yet from over. But we're getting good progress. We're getting good numbers, and we're very strong in terms of our um, cooperation in society and everything. So thank you very much to the public uh, for the cooperation that we have been receiving uh, and also including, of course, the foreign community uh, in Thailand and those who call Thailand home as well. So that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Please stay strong and please stay safe. 
and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Thank you. สวัสดีครับครับขอบพระคุณนะครับ